Leptorax unifacetus is a species of ants that can sort through many objects. Objects such as eggs, larvae, dead ants, or anything else an ant may encounter. Essentially, the ants use a decentralized system. Every single ant will make a decision based off its local area. For example, an ant may approach an area and see that there's lots of larvae, but only one egg. So it'll pick up this egg and drop it off somewhere else where it sees a lot more eggs. This process occurs over and over and over again, forming an overarching layer of intelligence. What you'll notice is that clusters of similar items will form near each other. For example, a cluster of smaller eggs will be beside a cluster of larger eggs. And then a bit off in the distance, you'll see clusters of larvae arranged in their own subsets. The ants have a very dynamic clustering system. And what's really intriguing about it is how the overarching layer of intelligence is built by effectively using the local intelligence for every single ant. This has really intrigued scientists and researchers as well. In fact, it's even prompted them to come up with an algorithm which mimics this behavior. This algorithm is called ant brood sorting. But can you imagine it optimizing your financial portfolio? Well, that's exactly what I did last year. Modern portfolio theory is the concept that most fund managers will use to optimize their financial portfolios. Essentially, it states that an optimal portfolio will do two things. It'll give you as much returns as possible, but it'll also take on the least amount of risk that it can. All that really changes among fund managers is the models, methods, and formulas that they'll use to incorporate this very basic principle into their financial portfolios. I wanted to create my own formula, and I wanted it to be fully automated so that I could remove all of the human bias. And to do that, I looked at existing computational algorithms. Neural networks are an algorithm that's based off your brain. They're basically a set of artificial neurons that will communicate with each other to take a set of inputs and give you a desired output. And just like the brain, they know what to do by learning off of older examples. I wanted to use neural networks to predict the future price of a stock, which gives me future returns. But what about risk? Risk is an extremely important part about optimizing a financial portfolio. And how do you reduce it? Well, there are many ways, but it all comes down to the old adage, don't put all your eggs in one basket. To not put all my eggs in one basket, I needed to identify which stocks are inherently similar so that I could avoid picking them. And to do this, I used the ant brood sorting algorithm. And my overarching algorithm worked. After testing in the years of 2013 to 2016, I learned that in the time that market went up 50%, my algorithm went up a full 87%. And by looking at beta levels, which are a financial tool to help assess risk levels, I learned that my algorithm generated portfolios with a much lower risk level. So the algorithm worked, and that means that the two individual concepts in it must have as well. And there's one thing that connects these two individual concepts. They're both based off of nature. Nature is something that's far from perfect, but it was still able to inspire scientists and researchers into developing these algorithms. And it's not just neural networks and antibrute sorting. It's also artificial bee colony algorithm, firefly algorithms, gravitational search algorithms, genetic algorithms, and so many more. This has formed a field known as nature-inspired computing. Nature-inspired computing refers to any computational algorithm that has been inspired by nature or a system inside of nature. You see, in nature, there are many complex problems, and nature often finds a way to solve them. 
For example, your brain is tackling on issues on a daily basis nonetheless, or evolution has solved many problems. Phenomena like these have really captivated the attention of scientists and researchers. And so they've created algorithms which mimic them. But why? Why are scientists and researchers devoting so much time and energy into creating these algorithms? What makes them so special? Well, the answer to that question lies in the simple fact that nature is unpredictable. As a result, whenever an animal or species in nature has been presented with a problem, it's had to adapt. Nature has had to use its resources in remarkable ways in order to solve these problems. An example is the artificial bee colony algorithm. This algorithm is based off the foraging method that bees will use in nature. Despite the fact that bees aren't exactly the most intelligent creatures out there, they're still able to create a very effective foraging method. Essentially, what they've done is they formed a hive mind. The bees have combined their intelligence and their resources into coming up with an adaptable foraging method that works in a variety of locations. And the ability to adapt is the basis of future algorithms. Traditional rule-based computing can't really solve many problems effectively without requiring lots of human intervention. Because for the majority of cases, problems don't really oblige to one standard rule. So if nature-inspired computing can adapt, the nature-inspired computing can solve many problems. And it's done just that. The aforementioned artificial bee colony algorithm has been used in a variety of locations. One notable example is the detection of breast cancer samples. Researchers from the Islamic Azad University in Iran attempted to use the artificial bee colony algorithm in order to detect breast cancer samples. And they did so at a success rate of 96.5%. That is incredibly competitive to existing methods. But it's also a much simpler model. Bees are detecting breast cancer. Bees are saving lives. And for another example, we can look at the particle swarm optimization algorithm, which has been used by researchers at the Electric Power College in South China's University of Technology. The particle swarm optimization algorithm essentially refers to a nature-inspired algorithm that has been designed to simulate social behavior. By using this algorithm to solve the heat system planning problem, which is basically referring to trying to optimize your heating system so it's a lot more eco-friendly and a lot more economically efficient, they were able to create a heating system that when compared to traditional systems was a lot more eco-friendly and a lot more economically efficient. But yet another area where nature-inspired computing has worked is sports. Unanimous AI is a company that's developed a technology called Swarm AI. Swarm AI is a set of interfaces and algorithms designed to simulate swarms in nature. They believe that if they can combine humans in the same way that a swarm of bees, fish, birds, ants, or any other swarm in nature can, they'll be able to accomplish remarkable things. And it's really hard to argue that they failed. For example, not only did they predict that the New England Patriots would defeat the Atlanta Falcons in Super Bowl 51, but they also predicted the exact score of 34 to 28 before the game. Plus, they predicted the top four horses in the Kentucky Derby, and in order. So they took a $20 bet and turned it into a $11,800 payout. Plus, they predicted the Chicago Cubs to defeat the Cleveland Indians in the World Series a few years back, and for the Pittsburgh Penguins to win the Stanley Cup back in 2016. But it isn't the fact that they've been able to accurately predict these events that's so very impressive. With random events like these, 
obviously, they won't be 100% accurate all of the time. Rather, what's really intriguing is how they're able to take a set of average fans and make them outperform the experts. And they're doing it in the same way that nature does. So what do these examples prove? Well, these examples show us that nature is moving forward. The days of traditional rule-based computing are coming to an end. Now, we're using innovative solutions to solve problems. Problems like detecting breast cancer, optimizing your heating system, or predicting the next Super Bowl winner all used to require humans. There was simply no other conceivable way to do these things. Luckily, people challenged themselves. They challenged themselves to think of innovative solutions. Solutions that would have been dismissed as trivial or unpractical before. These people showed us that there aren't boundaries when it comes to innovative thinking. Biologists and computer scientists may seem like polar opposites. One studies something very natural, the other something man-made. However, that didn't stop these two fields from joining together. People took a step outside of their area of expertise to solve problems that were in their area of expertise. And to move forward, we'll have to join together our areas of knowledge and our skills. And that's precisely what I challenge you all to do. Thank you.